All right, new at six, the pandemic had millions of people working from home. And now that things are getting back to normal, is it time to head back to the office? Well, 13 Action News anchor Todd Quinones looks at the changes coming to the American workforce. We are an essential business and the, the pe my team was working from their houses. Like so many companies, the multi-care group right near 95 in West Alexander had its employees making phone and Zoom calls from home over the last year. Well, Patrick Casal says on one level, remote work has been good for some agents at his insurance firm. I think the freedom of coming and going, the way we're doing it right now, may make us more productive. I think that the workforce would prefer that. I really believe in a business world that sometimes micromanagement burns people out. Casal says remote work is also appealing for some from a financial standpoint. I got to tell you, my business partner wanted me to get rid of the office, save the money. And I thought about it, gave it a lot of thought. But Casal says it's actually not a move that he wants to make. In the insurance industry especially, people want to know who they're buying their insurance from. Casal believes it's a smart move keeping an office where clients can find you. It is just one way that he separates himself from big competitors. It's a push button business. How many people get upset waiting five minutes to finally get a real person? Well, if we did the same thing here, we lose that personal touch. Maggie Harris with Harris Coaching and Consulting believes the success of remote work really does depend on the industry. I think it's working in some environments. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, I hate to come back with such a wishy-washy answer to say, well, it depends, but honestly, it does. Harris says there are a number of factors companies must consider. First, a business needs to know what their employees want. Part of it is really having conversations with the employees. Um, and if you have the conversations with the employees, acknowledge the input that they're providing you. Companies also need to decide how they plan to measure their success. Are they measuring how much people are working or are they measuring the output? Um, because that nine to five or that eight to five day for a typical organization, not counting the gaming, um, gaming companies, um, is really going away. Employees might be getting their work done from home, but it may look a little different. They can work, do a meeting, go do a load of laundry and empty the dishwasher. If companies do decide to let employees work from home, Harris says it's important to make sure they're not being overlooked. If I don't see them working, I don't know they're working. And there's a bias that kicks in and a judgment and assumption. So leaders really need to check how they are approaching this. And so to avoid that, she suggests people at every level need to be working from home at least part time. If you're going to be hybrid as an executive, you need to be hybrid too. It, it can't come off as, well, just, you know, the, the higher the position, the more you get paid, the, the leadership will still be in the office, but all the other people who aren't as important can be hybrid. Even after a year of remote working, Harris believes it will take another 12 to 18 months of testing the process for companies to know what's best for them. But there is one thing that many seem to agree on, work will never be the same. It will never look like it did two years ago. And and organizations that believe it will, um, I think are gonna suffer greatly. Patrick says his firm had to make changes during the pandemic, and so its flexibility will continue to keep them in business. Especially now in 2021, after COVID, change is gonna be the new word for every agency or every business. And if you're not, if you're not up on the changes, you're in trouble, you'll fail. Todd Quinones, 13 Action News.